Hey guys, in this second part of our lighting and rendering tutorial, I'm going to show you how I take the render layers that we created in the previous video in Maya and combine them and composite them in Nuke and turn them into this. Alright, so I'm going to go over the Nuke file that I've created. Um, I'm not going to explain how to use Nuke, so I will expect that you have some basic understanding of how the program works. But I am going to go over every node and show you exactly what I did. So in front of us here, we have the 10 render layers that we got out of Maya in the previous tutorial. We have the cube. We have the rim of the cube. We have our world position layer of the cube. We have the eye of the, the white of the eye of the cube. You can see it's very small over here. We have the ball, the rim of the ball, the world position, the depth layer, our shadow pass, and the floor. So now I'm going to show you how I took all of that and turn it into this uh, nice little sunset shot over here. So we're not going to touch in, in any of those layers. I have them all spread out throughout the script. This is my Nuke file. So it might seem a little daunting to those of you who don't know Nuke, but to those who do, it, it probably seems reasonable. Um, all of these nodes kind of work together and eventually will combine this shot that we're seeing here. Uh, let's start, let's go over it. On the right part, over here we have everything I did with the background. It's good to have organization in your Nuke file because it's really easy to get confused with all these nodes. On the left side, I have everything that I did with the characters. And then here in the middle, I combined them both and did a bunch of other stuff on the on both of them together. So let's start with the background. Now, I had a, I had a 2D background made for me by a guy named Sean Hopkins. He's a very talented graphic artist that works in the game industry in Canada. He did the 2D backgrounds for the for the film. Um, so let's start with that. This is the the 2D background that he painted. I asked to have like a painterly style texture on the backgrounds. So this is just one image. Uh, I reformatted it to to the HD format. I transformed it a little bit so it, it's in the right position. Added a little bit of blur. And that's it for the for the city skyline. In here, I have my floor render, my my floor pass. Uh, the reason you see these edges, these bad edges, in all of the uh, the render layers, you can see them in all of the layers. It's because it's um, unmultiplied. You need to to add the pre-multiply node to each of those layers to make it look good. So right now you see it's a little uh, jagged over there. And when you add the pre-malt, it fixes it. So that's why you're going to see a pre-malt node after every render layer. Some color correction, a little bit of blur, and a light wrap node that takes this image and creates a light wrap around the, around the edges. So let's see what it looks like. This is just the light wrap itself, and it adds it to the layer. It kind of blends both of them together. Uh, but before I show you how both of them blend together, I also added some darkness to, to the floor by creating just a, just a piece of, of, um, of dark, like a dark layer and multiplied it on the background. So this is before, this is after. And I did that because this whole part was, was kind of stood out way too much. So I had to darken a little bit. And then I take this piece and that piece and I add them together and we have the full background. Now this is something cool that I added. That I call it canvas overlay. It's basically this texture is a texture of like a, like a canvas reformat into HD and I just overlaid it on top of everything on the background so it gives it a, a, a canvas texture and I also added this as an overlay which is kind of a paper paperish texture so this is both of them 
Now I have some color correction nodes here and a little bit of blur, extra blur on everything. And this is how I got the final color. Now for the shadows, the character's shadows, is what I did was I took this pass, the shadow pass we had, Premalt, added it on top of a red background. So I get a, a full red background on everything. And I used that as a mask to add this texture. Hold on, I'll show you. This is the texture that I added. This is the texture of the shadow that I wanted. So basically I added that texture, but it was masked by the shadow. So basically it's adding all of this only where the shadows are. So the shadows are not just black, they have uh, like a paint, a painting texture to them. You can barely see it, but it's, you know, it's the little things. So that's it for the background. That's how I created the background with the shadows. Now let's move on to the characters. You see, I have them separated here. This is the cube. This is the ball. Let's start with the cube. Uh, the first thing I added on the cube was the rim light. Now what I did with the rim is I changed the grade a little bit and blurred it. And I took this layer and I multiplied it on the regular cube. So this is before and this is after. And it gives it kind of a three three dimensional feeling to it. It, it darkens some part of it and the other one uh, keeps it bright. So it gives it some kind of depth because before it was very flat, like everything was the same color. And this is how I got the, the 3D feeling. Then I added these cross hatches. And how did I do that? The cross hatches is, is this huge cross hatch texture. And I added a transform node, which, which you can, which is used to transform or rotate or scale whatever it is you're doing. So I added an expression to the rotation that each frame you rotated by 90 degrees. So if we just watch this layer, you see that it just, every frame it just rotates 90 degrees. So it seems like it's moving. And if I added that on the cube, it looks like the cross hatches are like being drawn every frame. As I, I wanted to give it a 2D animation feel to it. So now it seems like someone is actually cross-hatching them every time instead of being uh, just static. And the way I added them only on this side of the cube and not on, on the entire cube is with our world position render layer. The, before you probably didn't know what I was gonna do with it. Uh, now I can show you. Basically, I can use that to tell the the merge node here which adds the the cross hatches i can tell him i can tell it what where i want to put it so i mask it by the blue color so it took this layer and he only it only added these cross hatches on the blue part of the cube so you can see this is green on the top it's probably red and this is blue that's why we get the cross hatches only over here so this uh, render pass gives me a lot of control on adding stuff. I could have added it only on the front, only on top. It gives me a lot of control and let me play around with stuff. And that's how I got, I got this texture of the cube from this. This is like very flat, very boring. And over here, it, it's, it feels more 3D and it has an interesting texture on it. After that, there's some color correction, just a bunch of uh, gamma and contrast, contrast changes. And that's it for the cube. Now, the ball is just the same. The same layers, the same things. I added the rim light. Look how the rim, um, when I added it to the ball, how it gives it a, a 3D feeling. Before, it was just completely flat. And now with that, it seems like it's actually like a ball. And when I add these little cross hatches over here, it's even even nicer. Then we bring both of them together with this merge node. Uh, we put the ball on top of the cube, and we're getting this. Uh, some color correction nodes and grade nodes to make the color a little nicer. And a little bit of an edge blur to blur the edges of everything. 
All right, we're almost going to combine the two of them together. We have the nice background and the nice uh, characters already. But before we bring them together, I added a light wrap on the characters using the colors from the background. After I did that, I can merge both of them together. And we have the characters and on top of the background. Uh, now let's let's finish uh, finish it up. This is our depth layer, our depth render pass, and I use that for adding depth of field. Uh, I do that by copying copying the red channel from this into the depth Z channel. Now this is kind of advanced. Uh, new people will probably understand it a little better, but basically I'm telling. The, I'm telling you to use the color from this as the depth Z channel and we're going to use it later to create a depth of field so hold on. We have two nodes here that add a little bit of a cross hatch on, on top of everything. This is the same thing I did here the same thing I did with the cross hatching on everything but I added that on top of everything but I did it very very uh, subtly so there's barely anything here you can barely see it if I increase it to the maximum, you can see what I mean. But I put it on very low, so you don't really f see it, but it, you feel it a little bit. And also that paper texture, also moving. Added that on top of everything. So you see it's a lot of very, very small, subtle things that give uh, the nice feeling. Some more color correction nodes. One, two, three, four, five. And we're almost there. Now we can add the Z blur node. Now that that node is using the data from from this uh, depth pass. So let's see how it how it does it. You can turn on focal plane setup to just see kind of see where you are. Everything that is in green is going to be completely in focus, and then the red and blues are it's going to get blurrier as we go far. So you can kind of change your uh, focal point. And that's really a really easy way to set up your depth of field. So you see if I turn it off, well, it's, it's a very subtle depth of field, so you don't really see it. But if I increase it, you can see it a little. Yeah, now this is much stronger. So you can see my cube and my ball are super in super focus, and all the rest is very, very blurry. And if I change that, Now this is going to be in focus and this is going to be a little more blurry, but I'm going to go back to how it was. Okay. Now remember our little eye render pass. You can see them very subtly here. The eye of the, the white of the eye. I added a little bit of glow so you can see them a little better and I added it on top of everything. And that is because the eyes kind of uh, faded with all the color correction nodes that I had. You couldn't really see how white they were. This is before. You see it kind of, uh, it's a little like yellowish. And now when I, when I add that layer on top of it, it's much more prominent. Uh, one more thing was the canvas overlay that the same canvas I added on the background. I added that on everything. So these these things might seem redundant to you but it's it's so that i can bring everything together and the the, the layers won't seem so separate because before i had it on the background only this way i add on top of everything and it makes it makes it seem like it's all in the same world and then sometimes i do this i feel like it helps you add just a general blur on everything but very very small blur so a blur of one you can barely tell it's there but it makes everything a little less perfect a little less sharp and then I use a right node to render it. I render it at a TIFF file, 32-bit float. That's a pretty high res. And that's it. That's how we got from here or this thing that doesn't seem very attractive into our final result, which is a lot nicer. All of that with using Maya software and without using any lights in the scene. I think that's, uh, that's pretty cool. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and visit our website, bloopanimation.com.